Okay, this one's on Hershey and Blanchard situational leadership. Hershey and Blanchard came up with a pretty easy little um, schematic to demonstrate that not every employee is delegatable. They're not ready for you to fully delegate to them. Delegation can be broken down to, into a continuum with as many different levels as you, you want to. Um, very common now, currently, to have seven levels of delegation, but it doesn't have to be seven. Hershey and Blanchard just looked at four, and I think that's adequate for what they're trying to convey here. Mainly that employees have a level of what they call maturity. Maturity is just a proxy, or another word, for readiness, ability, and uh, knowledge. So in order to delegate to someone purely, completely, they need to be both willing to receive that, to take on those responsibilities, and able to get the work done. They need to have all the knowledge required, all the resources required. How many times have someone, has someone delegated something to you where you felt like, I'm very willing, but I don't have the power to get the resources I need. I can't go to someone in another department and say, hey, come over here and help me. They don't, they're not working for me. I haven't, been in, I haven't been given that power over them. Or I need to use some supplies or a particular computer or get into a database to get the data. I don't have access to it, so how can I do my job? We have to make sure they have access to all the resources that they need, first of all, and also we need to make sure that they are mature enough, they have the ability to do it and that they want to, that they understand the important role that they're playing by being delegated to. So Hershey and Blanchard said, look, when an employee is brand new, they don't have the ability or really the desire to do that, to do anything. So you should really be very directive with them. And that style he calls telling. When someone's brand new, here's a kind of an extreme example, when, um, when I got hired with a KPMG Consulting, I was working for a big five consulting firm and everything, and I had a PhD, but I didn't know my job. I didn't know anything. I didn't know where the bathroom was, so I needed to be told. So they sat me down with the kind of owner's manual for the project I was working on, and they had me read for a couple days, and then they answered some questions for me, and then they told me what to do. They gave me the task, they showed me how it was to be done, they asked me if I had any questions and they told me to do it, and then they checked my work, and that was perfectly fine. I needed to be told because I was immature. I didn't have a buy-in to the project, I didn't know why anything was particularly important, and I didn't know how to do anything. I was intelligent enough, I just didn't know how they did their work. So telling behavior was key. After a period of time, uh, what needed to happen for me is I needed to see the significance, the importance of the work that I was being asked to do. And so they began to talk to me about how this rather mundane work that I was doing on something called Duff daily usage feeds was important and why the accuracy of what I was doing was important and the consequences for not doing my job well and how my job was the outputs of my job were the inputs for different reports. We were doing a telephony support audit for the baby bells. So it needed to be explained to me because I didn't know what the project was about. That was selling behavior. The emphasis was there, uh, was my manager's emphasis then was to get me to begin to buy in that I would take more responsibility on the project. Over time, I was buying in more and more and doing, applying great effort and being very responsible with my work. And then they needed to not try to sell me so much anymore. Um, they, or they didn't need to be, they needed to be less directive with me and not tell me what to do because I wasn't a newbie anymore. After I had been there a month or two or three, somewhere in that time frame, I didn't want someone checking all my work and telling me exactly what to do anymore. I already knew how to do it. I had become the expert in that. So over, time going from selling to participating, as Hershey and Blanchard talk about, going from M2 to maturity level 2 to maturity level 3, what I needed to happen in my environment was for them to stop telling me what to do and let me do it. And they, they did that. And over time, I was completely able and completely willing to do whatever they needed me to do. And then they could just say, uh, 
oh, hey, we need you to do this, and they didn't even follow up with me. That was the pure sense of delegation. Delegation in its purest form is when you tell someone, I'd like you to do this, and you don't need to say it, but you, you don't need to come back and report to me. You don't need to show me your work. You don't even need to tell me that it's done. I'm, I'm telling you now it needs to get done, and I, I trust that you get it done in a timely manner and in the way in which I intend for it to be completed, period. Obviously, on my first day in the job or my first month in the job, if they started to delegate fully to me, I wouldn't be able and I wouldn't really be willing. I wouldn't understand what needs to happen and the consequences for less than uh, excellent work. So as you have employees, keep in mind that you need to bring them along. Maturity is not, you know, it's not, it's not a judgment of the person. It's just a, a word to, used to describe here both ability and willingness to do a task without any supervision at all and that that grows over time. If you don't delegate properly or if you don't treat people to their maturity level, you create a problem for them. If you delegate to someone who's not ready for it, they don't have the skills, abilities, or desire to do so, and there's a failure. If you delegate to someone, wait, uh, don't delegate to someone who already knows how to do the job, then you're micromanaging them. You're looking over all their work and continuing to give them direction when they don't want direction. And you know what it's like to know your job very well, and maybe you do it a little bit differently than others because you this works for you a little bit better. And to have your boss poking his or her head over your shoulder and always kind of critiquing, always judging, always evaluating, even the smallest details when those don't matter. You're ready to be let loose a little bit. You're ready to be delegated to and have some autonomy and freedom to get this work done in the way that you see fit. And there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to do that. That helps you further mature and grow and feel a sense of competency and mastery over your work. So keep that in mind as you're a manager leading others. You don't lead everyone the same way. And one of the elements that you need to look at is how mature is this person in terms of their ability and how bought in are they? Can I expect that if I just tell them to do something, they're going to get it done, period? Or do I need to work with them longer? Do they need to prove themselves a little bit longer in the organization? All right, that'll help you, I think, if you'll put it to, to good use.